Hello everyone, it's so nice to see you here. Um, it's been a while uh, since yeah. the last stream, so we're super happy to be back uh, here with you. Uh, we're here to talk about update 1.2, which is coming next week, and today we are going to show you everything, or almost everything, uh, that's going to be included in the update. Um, as always, um, if during the stream something's off, like something's too loud or not loud enough, um, let us know and we'll try to fix it uh, live. Um, yeah, it's so nice to see you all here. Um, my name is Wukash or Luke and I'm Armand Games Community Manager and I'm here with Aaron, our producer. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. Yeah. Uh, let's start with uh, update 1.2's most uh, important feature, uh, the most the cool trends. one, I think, yeah. uh, that trends panel. So, yeah, it's been a while. Um, this was one of the most requested uh, features, uh, I think, on Upvody. Uh, it was the second one. The second most yeah. requested feature. So, for a while, like a lot of you noticed that there are some happenings in the game, some events, some uh, situations where you want to know what your resources are doing, where they are going, and why they are going where they're going, basically. So uh, we decided to finally uh, take a look at that and implement a trends window um, where you can find and track your resources. You can find that, uh, like every resource in your settlement, where it's going, how it's doing, uh, how much you get it, uh, and how much you spend. So as you can see on the on the video here, well that's that's something new we have on the stream right now. We have some pre-prepared uh, videos. So yeah, you can yeah. We usually uh, we used yeah. to play live with uh, experimental dev console, but it didn't work well sometimes. Um, so now we have uh, some pre-recorded videos ready. Yeah, just to like focus more on talking and not just playing and talking. Um, so yeah, as you can see in the in the video, there are. Uh, like four panels. Um, there is the um, the resource panel, basically on the left. There is the recent history and operations. So there are two graphs. One is interactable. One is not interactable. The recent is interactable. It's five. The last five minutes of history, basically, and the history is uh, a non-interactable panel that shows the last thirty minutes. And so the highlighted um, yeah. elements on the history panel are the recent one. So the, the the orange part of the history graph is what's exactly. being it's what's visible on the recent graph, and you can basically click any panel, uh, any segment on the recent panel, and you can see on the right in the uh, operations segment there are basically a, a log of events. So everything from construction, production, consumption, events, and so on. Uh, one reason why it's because this request is quite an old request I think from players during early access we had some uh, already some like voices uh, from players who want to see this uh, and the reason why it's coming just now be is because we always had the difficulty of figuring out how to exactly do this uh, mostly because you know the game isn't really like a production heavy game it's more of a game where a lot of different things can happen and uh, they can happen quite radically and they can for example um, like change the quantity of resources you have very like drastically in the amount of like 10 seconds for, for example so in normal games like city builders or factorial like games like something that changes your quantity of uh, resources by let's say a hundred uh, happens in, in, like, in one second happens very very rarely and or in our game it's, it's a lot of like rewards from orders a lot of orders taking your resources so it was difficult to design a system where we could basically give you the information in a readable uh, manner, but I think we did a good job with that. Um, especially our lead programmer, uh, Michal, who uh, did an excellent job on that. So now you can see all the missing planks, all the things that are disappearing in the settlement more clearly, and hopefully you will know more about where your resources are going. Um, and yeah, this, um, this panel is accessible from the very beginning. It's not locked behind any like uh, meta res meta resources or upgrades or so on. Uh, it's just not po uh, not accessible in the first tutorial. But after that, you can basically see see it in the game right away. 
Oh, and uh, you might have noticed that in the video right now that when you hover over an operation on the on the log on the right, there is like a prompt saying that you can click on this icon and it will transport you to the building that, for example, consumed the resources you wanted to, to see. Yep. Um, what else? Um, yeah, the, the, the upper graph is interactable. Yeah. You can use the search bar uh, to search for particular, particular resources. We hope this will be useful uh, in finding what happens to your valuable resources. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the most uh, important feature. Yeah. Uh, the next one... Um, the next one is also... Like when it comes to the scale, I think, uh, yeah. is the Blight Post and its new upgrades, including Automaton units. Yeah, yeah. so uh, first thing you will notice here is that uh, the Blight Post looks a bit differently than it used to. Some of you who have played some other, like, uh, early access versions of the game might remember this building layout. We took an old building layout that wasn't used and uh, changed it up a bit. We think it fits the the fantasy of the blight post a bit better. Also, we weren't really uh, excited about the look of the old blight post, so we decided to like freshen it up a bit. Uh, and so we can see here there is uh, a few uh, two rows of um, of upgrades. And the first one and the second one have all have three upgrades per row. And yeah, the most like flashy one is the automaton, which will uh, help you burn blight throat cysts. Um, it doesn't produce uh, purging, purging fire. Point. It's just like this additional helper who walks around your settlement and uh, burns cysts. Um, but yeah, it should be a pretty good, um, pretty good upgrade for a lot of you because. And now coming to the design decision behind it is because um, we noticed that um, fighting blight rot in the late stages of the game can get sometimes quite tedious. Plus, it's uh, we want to promote this play style of basically like going into blight rot a bit of more corruption. Uh, we want to do it uh, so that it's more attractive and more interesting and also not as tedious. Um, so we think that those upgrades will be a good way to handle that. Um, here you can see how they, um, <laughs> yeah. The animation is so cool. Uh, Aaron did that. Oh, uh, yeah. that's his animation. I, I, I love it. I was having so much fun. I was having fun animating it. That, that just, was uh, just watching uh, those guys uh, fight. And um, that was basically Damon's idea with the the cannons on the chest. Just take the compliment, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. It was cool. It was a very fun, uh, fun thing to do. Um, and yeah, the other. Um, the other uh, things in the blight post, so the other upgrades, they are like the standard ones you will also uh, know from other buildings, like production speed, um, like uh, for example production yield. Um, this is the, the, the standard stuff. We, we will try to balance it out better in the future because you know every time something uh, comes up, like uh, in the game, something new that is flashy, like the automaton, will probably be a very uh, attractive choice in the beginning but once things settle down we will see how many of you play with that upgrade if the other upgrades are chosen at all if the prices of the upgrades are uh, okay so don't worry about that we'll just uh, you know we'll balance it out in the future as you can see the upgrades cost uh, metal resources so basically pipes um, parts tools. or tools and some packs of building materials. So that's uh, yeah, that's also trying to promote the metal playstyle a bit more. It's it should tie in with industry, with blight, and so on and so on. Um, uh, yeah, what else? That I think that's that's it with when it comes to the like big feature of the blight uh, blight post upgrades. Um, oh, uh, someone said that they look expensive. Yeah, they are expensive because. For example, when you look at houses, uh, housing upgrades in the in the game, they are a bit cheaper because houses you build a lot of houses, like ten e even or even more in some in some uh, play sessions. Whereas the blight post is one building. Sometimes you build two uh, or more if you're like really trying to push it. And you know, I don't know why we, we would build more, but um, because it's just one building, it's a bit bigger investment, uh, and that's why. Uh, that's why it is a bit more expensive. Um, oh, and the blight post upgrades are 
late game. So you unlock them via the uh, smoldering city, and it's up to three basically, very it's very high. Brass up. Forge level eleven. Yeah. Um, so the question um, regarding blight fighters. By the way, I totally encourage you to. Uh, to ask questions during the stream, we'll try to answer as many yep. questions as possible. The, the the tricky ones are the the balance questions because uh, it's hard to like answer them on the go uh, or many of them on the go. We usually need to to look at data um, to, to to give you more uh, complex answers. So we will probably answer less of those, uh, but. Maybe let's try the first one. Any chance the Blight Fighter perk is getting buffed to also to boost burning uh, rate? Uh, which which uh, perk are you referring to? Um, the because there were I think the last ones we had it was the speed and the burning time. Uh, but for now, there, there, I, I, from the top of my head, we don't really have plans to buff the Blight Fighter speeds because you know Blight Fighter uh, upgrades like the Blight Post upgrades will shake things up a bit in the meta of like building and finding uh, blight red cysts. So there are no plans for that right now, uh, and not in this update, but we will see how it evolves basically after the addition of upgrades. Yeah, so another question, will there be more lore? Why this civili civil civilization has problems with smelting mat metals? Um, in this update also, we include a bit more lore, uh, some new lore, um, and like the descriptions of the upgrades are like small hints, but um, not not in terms of metal, but overall, uh, Aunt Lori is also having uh, is getting some new dialogue with this update about lore. Um, so we're constantly like adding small bits and uh, you know teasing some stuff, but uh, we don't really plan on explaining a lot, uh, like very literally about the metal thing and why smelting isn't uh, really something that in this world has a lot of um we're never really going to i think add some some very uh story heavy missions to the game some something that is very like dialogue heavy uh, all of those things will come in the form you already know about so items descriptions of species descriptions of uh, resources dialogue with aunt lori um for now we don't plan on adding like more about the civilizations and how they treat metal but yeah, in the future, why not? We'll probably sprinkle some lore inside of uh, some perks and items as well. There's a cool, cool question. So yeah. previously, it there was a question whether this uh, blight post is still at a rectangle or not anymore. Um, and the question is, would you be open to having weird shaped buildings hmm. rather than all square rectangle? And this is a very cool question because we have a system in place that allows us to make different yeah. shapes of the building, but uh, it's usually pretty hard to design a building in in such a weird shape. Um, yeah, it's um, the blight post, as you can see, has this one field in front of it where you could make an empty field, basically. Um, and in the beginning, when uh, when you first sat down to redesign it, it was empty. It was supposed to have a weird shape. But then uh, I decided to basically keep it as a square because uh, there's th this room for the automaton there. Um, and in the future, I think we will try something like that because the system was implemented a long time ago, like halfway through early access. We wanted to experiment with building shapes, but um, we never really had the, the courage to do that. Uh, and I think it's always a question of, do you go all in? Do you redesign a lot of the buildings in the game? Or do you just do it with one or two, see how it looks? Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, it's something we we uh, we want to do, but uh, but for now there are no buildings like that in the game. Yeah. And, yeah. So I, I remember Damian, uh, our graphic designer, was uh, complaining that this, let's say, um, corner-like building, um, it needs to be super thin. Yeah. And yeah. all our modules, all it, it just didn't fit like it was super thin um, it looked weird uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't cool so that was usually the case like because of this weird shape though the, the, 
we had to put some limitations on the buildings. Yeah, with bigger buildings, that's that's something you can do. If, for example, this bite post, if there were an automaton sitting there, uh, even in the earlier version, there was like a ladder in front, not in the back. Uh, that made sense, but for smaller, like two by two buildings, taking away one chunk basically creates a very thin L, uh, which is very weird with the scale of the game because if you look at the units and at the buildings that are like one by one uh, uh, width, then it's it looks bizarre. So um, even if we des if when we designed foxes, I think we wanted to do something like that with their houses. But as you can see on on the video, their <laughs> houses are pretty massive, and like taking away half of the width would cause them to look bizarre. But yeah, in the future. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll try. See. We'll there's try. there's a system in place, and yeah. whenever we approach making new buildings, we keep in mind that something like yeah. this exists. We really wanted to do that, and I think Miha was a big fan of that because it introduces a new layer of planning into the game, or even like spots where you can just throw in uh, decorations. For example, if you have a house with one free spot, you can just throw in uh, some barrels there, and you know another player might throw in some flowers there. It, it would look pretty cool and unique. Uh, based on who is playing, but yeah, that's that's a minor thing for now. Yeah, we're talking a lot about things that are not in game. <laughs> Let's uh, get <laughs> Let's back to talking about things, things that, that are, are actually in, game, in yeah. the game or coming uh, soon. So, is this I think we can move on to the next. Yeah. So next uh, thing. we mentioned uh, new lore. That's the, the main features uh, from Aunt Lori, uh the blight post, the uh, trends panel. Um, so I think we can move on. To Let's move on to world events. World events. Yeah. So um, for a very long time, um, some of the world events didn't have their own art. Uh, we we used the same art for a couple of, of of world events, and we always wanted to make each of them unique. So in this update, in update 1.2, we are finally adding all the all the art. So every world event will have unique art and sound effects. Here you can see a couple of those um, for crashed airship. Um, yeah. So we have four fire mobs. I don't have uh, all all of them listed here. Yeah, but, but basically it's like there around eight or yeah, the, there were like I think seven or eight missing uh, from the previous batch. Uh, so we just took some time and uh, I mean Diamond took some time. <laughs> we can draw. Uh, <laughs> Diamond painted uh, the rest of them. Uh, so we can also, if you're asking about lore, I think the new illustrations will give you some cool hints, some cool ideas about some some characters in the world and some things in the world. For example, there is uh, one uh, very cool uh, NPC in the game, a trader, uh, and one of the events shows um, even more of like his kind. So not to spoil too much, um, but but yeah, that that's something we would uh, we wanted to do a long for a long time, and we decided to. Uh, basically add some some more illustrations now there shouldn't be any placeholder art basically in the world events we also um and i could uh, maybe uh touch on that one while we are on the topic of uh, world events we also changed some of the balance there um some of you rightly noted that some world events are could use some balance paths we didn't really revamp them or like change uh, them entirely but we did some balance there some uh, some improved rewards some changed objectives um, for example the gambler now gives a bit more uh, for like winning the event there are also some events like the uh, the forsaken gods uh, followers yeah the, this event, for example, now gives a bit more rewards because we wanted to nudge players into the uh, pretty corrupted playstyle of killing villagers, for example, uh, and so on and so on. So there are a few events in this uh, in this one update where we just wanted to, um, yeah, to improve the rewards for them and the objectives. Um, and in terms of world events, I think that's it. What What is your favorite illustration from this batch of? World events. Um, I like the bankrupt trader. Yeah, bankrupt. we didn't show it on video, yeah, but yeah. bankrupt trader is my favorite one. He's my soulmate. Uh, yeah. So when you when you see him in the game, think of me. Yeah. <laughs> when you see um, brass order engineers, and think of me. That's my yeah. favorite one. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, um, yeah. So what's wha- next? Wha- once you get to play it, let us know what's your favorite one. Yeah. Um, and oh, the new, the all the new illustrations are also in the supporter part. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so as we now have all the all the art for n- world events, uh, we are also adding them to the supporter pack. So by the way, thank you everyone who who got the supporter pack. This helps us a lot. Means a lot to us. So we are adding something extra for you, uh, all the world event art uh, to the supporter pack. Yeah. We also changed one of them into uh, a 4K wallpaper. That's um, Fire Moths uh, event. Yeah. Uh, it looks really, really cool. I think yeah. you'll like it. It's super nice. And we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we are also adding all the new portraits that were introduced in the previous update. Uh, so for all the, all the traders. Um, yeah, we mentioned rebalance of world events, uh, new art and sound. So let's move on to the very cool, um, I'd say, um, quality of life feature that was also highly requested. And I think you'll like it. It's the uh, search bar for Encyclopedia. Yeah. Um, basically, you can now type any word and any entry in the Encyclopedia that includes the word will uh, will show on in the left panel. Yeah, so buildings, uh, cornerstones, traders, uh, anything yeah. that's mentioned in the description. Uh, so even if you like search for bricks, you will see the buildings that produce bricks. We don't have it on the video, but it's not only in the help tab; it's uh, it's in all of the tabs, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's in all the tabs, and also below there is a small thing under the uh, when you look at the categories. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So here's the small uh, community wiki link. Also, you can, for example, uh, search something. If it's not in this uh, encyclopedia, uh, uh, the community wiki editors did a very good job with like all the things that are described there. So if you want to look something up very quickly, you can also use that. So for example, we can go into buildings and search, for example, for, uh, let's say, planks. And uh, oh, here this is a development build, so I know what I'm, what is uh, hidden from me. So this you can see the names here. But yeah, there is a carpenter, lumber mill, crude workstation, and I can search for everything I want. In the help window, I can search even for like uh, search look, look. Yeah. Ah, nothing there. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Looks not in the game. Um, but I can search, for example, for alt, and that will give me the like this shortcuts, for example, and, and so on. Uh, or maybe overlay is also going to, I mean, that's easy, but <laughs> with all those things here, you can, for example, search for uh, grain um, and you will see most of the perks, all the perks that use cornerstones, that use uh, grain uh, in their description. So that should be useful and uh, yeah, um, maybe make it your life a bit easier. Someone asked if the Glade events are in the encyclopedia. No, not now. Um, this is a bit more tricky and we want to do that in the future. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's still not in this version of the game. Because there is one, I think the biggest issue with that is that Glade events are a bit harder than buildings to show and to give you options to like manipulate the, all the inputs that go into them. So there is like this different like choices, rewards, rewards. and the rewards are, I know, don't know if you noticed that, but rewards are RNG. So basically a lot of the rewards are like a whole table of rewards basically is possible. Like 20 or 30 items can be drawn uh, in any uh, configuration in this event. So we have to- It depends on the difficulty. Yeah, Yeah, also that. So we will have to think about it a bit more and how to present it in a good manner and we'll see in the future if we implement that finally. I know it's uh, not the answer you want to hear, but uh, you can also, now you can also easily check the community wiki, the the events are listed there. Um, I know this is not what you're asking for and this is not like um, our way to to show you events in the game, Uh, but just, just saying that to also uh, emphasize the huge amount of work that the community put into making the wiki. Um, we're super proud of you guys. Like, really, it looks so, yeah. so well, and it has... Super um, amazing, yeah. You can find information about almost everything in the game and yeah. some some things that are not explained in the game or hidden from players uh, in the game. You can search for those in the 
in the wiki and what's cool about it uh, wiki is um, it's all made by the community it's hosted on hooded horse website and hooded horse is uh, well whenever they get any request how to improve the encyclopedia let's say add a new new functionality yeah and um, they do that so and you everyone can can contribute and uh, you just need to uh, I think uh, connect your uh, connect your Steam account. I mean, log in with your Steam account token, uh, and basically we'll be able to to modify uh, the articles and contribute. So this is very very nice. Um, I recommend if you if you haven't checked it yet, I recommend uh, I recommend giving it a try. And as uh, people in the chat mentioned, uh, um, I think. The, the it's most m important person to to mention is Alcaven. She yep. she's been contributing to the uh, wiki a lot and been like keeping it all together, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So yeah, yeah uh, I invite you to join our Discord. It's uh, discord.gg slash against the storm. I mean, oh yeah, <laughs> against. What's the name of the game again? Dash. Dash. No, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> I'll link in the chat. What, what was it? Um, so in the meantime, um, I think did I did I mention it's super easy to remember the the, the name of the Discord? Yeah, GG. And I don't remember it. Um, you can also use the link in the game. The oh, game. cool. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, we can all my problems always are like now. go into the main menu here uh, and look at mm, this here button. It's also pretty easy to go, uh, <laughs> use that. Um, sorry, yeah. Um, okay, let's let's go back to update notes. Um, also, in terms of quality of life and basically ease of use, there is one thing that uh, some players have noticed is pretty uh, pretty useful, and in, in some situations is cycling between buildings. So right now you have this one. This is a small change, but uh, it's all I think worth mentioning. So if you have two buildings of the same kind, let's say, you can switch between them and that's that works pretty well um, but some of you asked for an option to switch between different halves uh, because this is the ancient half it's not the same as the uh, small half but now we treat them as basically the same so you can switch between them and even if you look here uh, this shows you now a number one even if you don't, didn't have a small half in your settlement but it treats them as it counts them as one basically and the storage is the same so we can now cycle between small and big storage and main harp and regular harp um, also a lot of other things in the game right now are like put together and summed up in the same way so for example a uh, ghosts uh, in the curse Lake woodlands you can now cycle between them and i think there's also a few other uh, other buildings that don't have it noted down mainly like events for example camps uh, you find in glades uh, you can like cycle between them right now uh, more easily just access other buildings of the same type for example um, other than that uh, one thing that is hard to show on stream but some of you will be happy to know about is if you use a shortcut oh uh, oh is now the shortcut for trends uh, so if you were making a lot of screenshots with yeah. the screenshot mode um, screenshot mode is now p by default and O is trends uh, but you might notice that oh you might not notice because you don't see my hand but a lot of you asked about closing <laughs> full screen panels with the same button you open them with so now you can do this uh, basically you don't need to press the X icon here or use uh, escape you can basically use the same keybind to close full screen uh, button uh, panels um, there Another cool thing, um, small but cool, uh, in the Steam discussions, if I remember correctly, there was a request to, and it was, uh, people were surprised that when you build a half, uh, when it's under construction, uh, there's no, uh, there's no area displayed. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so now, uh, the area is displayed when you when so the half is under construction. Open up some glade here and show this to you. Uh, yeah, whatever. Remove that. I'm just using now uh, some some dev things. Um, so if you build a half somewhere here, and now if it's under construction, you can still see its area. That should help you with 
planning out some hubs in the in some glaze, for example. Um, other than that, um, oh, there's some smaller changes. Encyclopedia uh, trades and trade routes uh, mentioning uh, scaling them up with the where is that? So the trade route multiplier is something that we that not a lot of players know about. We tried to nudge you into this uh, with um, with adding like orders that should require that but at the same time it's not really easy to understand so now when you uh, read the encyclopedia about trade routes you can see that information there um, it should be a bit easier uh, also some screenshots in the encyclopedia were updated that's some minor stuff uh, yeah that's I think oh and a lot of wording changes of course like descriptions improved like there was I think one issue when some players uh, didn't know really if they could play the, the last game of a cycle uh, because there's a message that tells you if, this, like the, if the cycle timer is over, the, the message tells you you can embark one last time, but people didn't know that you needed to be close to a seal to do that. So we improved some like different descriptions in the game. Um, but I think we can move on to balance because that's more interesting. That's also a big one. And yeah. also we already have a question related to balance. Yeah, because we mentioned balance with the world events, but there's also some balance with orders with this uh, update. None of the orders, orders I chosen here are the, <laughs> the ones we rebalanced. But um, there were mainly, I think, three issues we tackled with this update. One is that, um, and some of you rightly noted that uh, some orders had very weird rewards, which were, to be honest, like leftovers from previous balance iteration of the game. For example, humans had an order where they would reward you with uh, jerky. But this order was based on humans and they didn't eat jerky. So that, that that was an interesting order in terms of it was synergized with another species, but at the same time was but nonsensical. So we changed that. So there's some orders we improved in terms of rewards, in terms of objectives. The other bigger thing was, um, the other big thing was with, uh, I think the new orders from the last update. Yeah, they were the last update. Uh, where we added some new tier one orders, uh, which were supposed to nudge you into like different areas of the game, make the opening a bit more interesting. Uh, we can even like start again and see opening orders again. Um, but at the same time, some players correctly noted that there are some problems with these orders. Um, there is, there are sometimes too hard. Sometimes they require things that are inaccessible right away. There were no parts rewarded for them, so the overall balance of parts was uh, very weak in, in the beginning. So this resource suddenly became, if your rolls were bad, very rare for you, more than we intended. So um, yeah, we took a look at that. We changed the uh, the rewards for them, added some parts there, decreased some requirements so that if, for example, an order that, I think one of the orders were was to upgrade the gazer panel, uh, panel, uh, the pump to level two. Uh, and we just lowered it down to level one, to just one upgrade you had to buy to finish that order. Plus the, re the rewards for it are a bit better and they synergize more with a uh, light rod rain punk heavy build so now if you choose this order it might be a bit difficult still because you have to basically build a, uh, a pump but at the same time it gives you later later on a bit more a better boost for example for this build uh, and that's with a lot of the orders we changed that we also removed some of the orders uh, I think two of the new orders we introduced uh, last time were removed for the more uh, complicated goods that were supposed to be delivered. Uh, some of them are still there because we think it's interesting to force, or force, <laughs> encourage players to, uh, for example, try metal very e early on. But at the same time, you know, this was uh, something that problematic if this happened too often. So we changed that. Uh, oh, and the last one was there are some timed orders which were a bit weird, harder to do than others. Uh, for example, one notable example is the trials. So the forager trial, the trappers trial, trial, hard word, <laughs> um, where we would require you to, for example, deliver 50 vegetables plus 50, for example, pff, I don't know, grain. 
But the thing was that these resources wouldn't really, for first of all, they weren't present in the biome, for example, we wanted you to be in. Um, second of all, they um, uh, they required two different camps, but the order was named like Trapper's Trial and so on. Um, so we decided to revamp them entirely, and now they are different versions of trials. So for example, there is Forager Trial on Royal Woodlands, which requires one set of goods, uh, and all of those goods are acquirable through the forager, forager camp. And for example, there is another set of requirements for Curse Royal Woodlands. Uh, and if there is a biome which doesn't have any of those resources, then or one of those resources isn't naturally occurring in a biome, then we basically just scrapped it from this biome. This should make the order accessible, uh, or at least like achievable to a degree. Still hard because that's what you want from timed orders. They're supposed to be hard, but at least they should. Like, you should see a way of achieving it if you really try. If you scrap all of the other things in your city and just basically focus on that one thing, it should be should be good. Um, and I think that's it in terms of orders. Yeah, we also removed like three or four weak orders. Uh, improved the weird rewards. Some timed orders, aside from the trials, we also changed. For example, there is a uh, lumber mill efficiency test, which required barrels, but barrels aren't made in the lumber mill, lumber mill. So we changed that to scrolls. We also improved some rewards out there, which w weren't really fitting with the, for example, species the order was based on. So yeah, some, some balance changes here that should make the orders a bit more, some of them more attractive, some of them a bit uh, easier, but overall, we we're just aiming for variety here and for less dead choices, basically. Um, yeah. There's so, uh, yeah, um, there were a couple of questions, but I think we'll answer those uh, later on. Uh, what I wanted to mention is that we were talking a lot about balance. And we weren't able to show all the things on the screen. We are now uh, showing you all the things we've uh, shown previously. But uh, rest assured, there will be a huge patch notes on on the patch on the update day, so you will be able to and to check it out. So uh, make sure to check out Steam for uh, for announcements. We plan to release the update on Monday, March four, at six p.m. UTC, um, around that time, maybe a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Um, as um, as we noted in the in the update notes, uh, in the in the announcement, um, this time we need to close the settlements, the ongoing settlements. This is something that we did during early access when we released updates that had uh, big systemic changes. Uh, unfortunately, to pre um, prevent any game breaking issues, we need to close those settlements when we introduce uh, such yeah. big features. And this is what is going to happen. Uh, this time as well. So how does it work uh, for those of you for whom this will be the first patch? Uh, is that if you are in the middle of the settlement and you download the update and when you launch the game, this settlement will be closed and this means in the game terms uh, that it just didn't happen. Like there, you, it's count, you get uh, citadel resources that you'd get for winning this game. You get a royal resupply uh, but the town doesn't appear on the map uh, you don't get rewards for world events that were uh, if you were playing a world event yeah. um, you don't get rewards for it you don't get um, a deed if you were in the middle of doing a deed uh, it's not counted as as done so if you if you're in the middle of those uh, please make sure to uh, to finish before uh, updating the game. Um, but in any other scenario, like if you finish the settlement before the update goes live, like you won't even notice. And if you're in the middle of the, if you in the middle of the settlement and like there's nothing important, there's nothing uh, waiting for you there, then you'll at least get some citadel resources and uh, royal resupply. Um, what else? So yeah, 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 the Monday is coming on. Uh, the update is coming on Monday, uh, March four, uh, six p.m. UTC. Uh, we'll be uh, announcing it on our Steam, uh, yeah. Discord, and 
anywhere else where you can find against the storm. Um, so yeah, there's some um, still some balance things we also can uh, talk about later on and answer some questions. Um, for example, there's also some changes to sealed games. Or oh, and if you are playing a sealed game or a Queen's Hand trial, the update won't like cause failure. Basically, will the seal will be rewinded. Basically, you can try again. And uh, in Queen's Hand mode, you, you don't lose. You just uh, your settlement never happened. You just uh, but you gain the the rewards for it. Um, yeah, we can still talk about more about some other balance changes still and then we can move on to other sure. miscellaneous update stuff sure just and one just one, one quick thing as with any update uh, we did our best to test uh, all the new features but as always whenever we whenever in in, so yeah. in software development in general whenever you add a new feature it creates possible problems especially when you fix bugs you fix one bug and yeah, exactly. Three so more here. we did our best. We we kept testing the the update for the past few days. We're still doing it now, but it may come to that that there are some issues in the game. Uh, if so, uh, don't worry. We'll fix those. Just yeah. let us know uh, if you if you were around during early access. I think you know that we treat uh, bugs very seriously. Uh, so whenever we get any reports, we jump right into them. Yeah, I think we have a good track record of posting uh, hot fixes like one day <laughs> after or or <laughs> half a day after the update or two days after max, so it should be fine. Yeah, so um, if you encounter any issues, just let us know and we'll take care of those. Yeah. By the way, the update itself will uh, bring a lot of uh, fixes. Uh, we won't go over them d during this live stream because we don't want to lose any more viewers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to bore you. There yeah, th there are just some. Uh, there aren't any like major bugs in the game right now, which required a lot of fixing. There's mostly like some housekeeping, some smaller bugs, um, mm -hmm. some modifiers appearing with other modifiers, ghosts spawning, uh, like having objectives that aren't accomplishable because you don't have, for example, rain punk. Um, and some smaller things like harvesting speed being capped at 50% and so on, increases basically. Um, but in terms of balance again, because that's, that's a hot topic and good thing to talk about right now, we also uh, changed some seal objectives for the lowest level of uh, of the lowest level of uh, basic seal, but bronze seal, settler bronze seal. Because some players correctly noted that when you're playing the first seal, when you just started the game, you get some objectives there from uh, like st increasing standing or finishing trade routes, which we have noticed that yeah, it's probably sometimes not really possible when you are a beginner and haven't unlocked trade routes yet. So we changed that. There are some other uh, objectives in the in the first seal and the easiest one. Um, this one was this was uh, like a mm, design decision, but turned out it was probably more frustrating than it was really yeah, like yeah, teaching yeah. anything. And it's just the first seal. You want players for the first bronze seal of the settler game to have an easier experience because we want them to get into this biome and uh, at least give it a fair try and you know have a fair. Uh, chance of winning it. Uh, also, one thing I think a lot of you will be excited about, especially the veterans who love harpies, is we finally changed their uh, upgrade bonus from the house from the break time to something else. Uh, so, for those of you who who doesn't who didn't know, uh, harpies uh, they have a housing upgrade, the last one, which is basically shortening the amount of time people spend at the hearth uh, resting. But this time is like very short from the get-go it's like a few seconds the most time people spend when they take a break it's walking to the half basically um so we decided to change that and now it's it's increasing the production speed for every villager in living in this house uh, increasing by five percent uh, the production speed of all recipes in that uh, are based on fabric basically so producing fabric and using fabric in other resources is faster because of harpies, uh, because of this uh, their upgrade. Basically. 
There's also um, some changes to the Queen's hand trial. Um, so also one thing, one piece of feedback we've gotten from the like from start of 1.0 was that the embarkation points in the Queen's hand trial are a weak upgrade. Basically, you don't choose them because by the time you have enough of them. If you are far away from the Citadel, it doesn't count. It's still zero, basically, or one. So this doesn't give you a big enough upgrade. So we never chose, or rarely chose, the uh, embarkation point increases. But now we decided to basically give it a flat twice bonus, basically. So it's now every upgrade that gives you embarkation points in the Queensland Trial is increasing embarkation points by two. So instead of plus one, you get plus two. So it should make it a bit more, um, yeah, attractive to choose embarkation point bonuses in Queen's Hand Trials and like unlock this entire like branch of gameplay where you think about embarkation and points and how you use them and so on in regular games. Uh, other than that, there's some uh, perk changes from the Ashes is demoted from legendary to epic, it's a weak cornerstone and it should stay at epic. Uh, biscuit recipes gets a buff. Uh, it's now adds its recipes of three stars instead of two stars to kiln and rain mill. Uh, and oh, and one big change we did is the smoldering city upgrades. So we can show this, I think, instead of showing a video. Um, Cool. In the meantime, um, Ron was also asking what about the um, art for the win and lose uh, panel for Queen's Hand Trial, because we mentioned that all the world event got their own unique art, um, but the, this Queen's Hand Trial panel used the same art. Um, for now, there are no plans for that. It's, uh, it's something very low on the list to update. Um, but we'll see about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. This is one place where new art could be nice. Yeah. Especially if Daman is up for new illustrations. So with this update we also reshuffled a lot of uh, a lot of upgrades. There there's no like there's only one upgrade one new upgrade which is basically this one, uh, the Brass Forge level 11, which is the blight post upgrades, uh, it's, which is very high. But we also changed shuffled a few things around. Mainly our our goal was to first of all to give you the the to make space basically for the light post upgrades but also to cause i mean to help new players a bit by giving them the first grace period update upgrade a bit f earlier in the tree because as you might might know this uh, one upgrade is for now is very high up here so you get that when you're f probably already done with the game um, but we wanted to, you know, give it a bit sooner because there is an issue where new players, first of all, have a harder time, but at the same time, they also not, they don't always notice that they are losing the game. So this should help them, like, notice, oh, I'm, I'm right close to losing this game. I should do something about that. Uh, we also changed some of the other upgrades, for example, now the more Citadel Resources uh, type of upgrade isn't anymore in this main branch. It's moved to the First Dawn headquarters. So, you know, we made some space here in the main branch for other upgrades. Haulers are now in the main one. And this, this upgrade to Citadel Resources is moved to a different branch, basically, just to like spice things up a bit, uh, create a bit more decision making in this for first few levels of the, of the upgrade tree. I think that's the main things with this one. Yeah, so uh, when you enter the game and find out that there's some uh, feature missing that you previously had, perhaps this is oh, because yeah. of the of uh, reshuffling of, of the upgrades. So make sure to check update notes to see if, if perhaps the, the, e the feature that you're missing might have been uh, moved to a yeah, this, this might be if you are, for example, in the middle of this this tree, and for example, you had one upgrade here, it'll now move to the right. So you know you just have to uh, take some note of that before uh, playing. But um, yeah, it it might ruin some of you uh, some of your plans for uh, your progression here. But it's I think a good thing for the game 
to you know balance around here a bit more because this tree could use some balance and yeah. we finally decided to like take a look at it a bit more and we're by the way alkaline we're not purposefully giving you a hard time uh, <laughs> changing uh, the encyclopedia oh yeah <laughs> um so I think in terms of balance, that it there are some smaller changes which are not really worth mentioning. Um, one other thing that is also a bigger change, it's more to do with art of the game other than uh, like balance or features. Uh, as you know, we sometimes we change some icons in the game. Uh, last time we uh, improved some of our uh, event icons, mostly the consequence ones. But now we also took a look at the, at the icons for the working effects. So now you can see some of the working effects. This one is <laughs> this is this cool. is the I coolest one. Um, yeah, so we're working with a very talented icon artist, uh, Teron. If you're listening, uh, you're great. Um, and so we replaced all of the working effects icons with some new custom ones, which should you know, add a bit more flavor to the game and also make them more unique. Uh, maybe help you remember some of these these effects because they are now m better or more tied to the descriptions and to the visuals of the event. Um, but also because we want custom art because some of these icons, as you might know, were from like asset packs uh, in the previous uh, versions of the game. So if you play a lot of indie games, you might see those icons in many places. That's why we wanted to change them for something that is tailor-made for the world of against the storm so that's really cool now m a lot of all events basically now have something new here some new icon oh, for example the fear of the wilds now has a caravan door that looks like our caravan and not like some random caravan out there by the way it worked uh, we already have people in the chat asking for beaver pirates with eye patch game <laughs> beaver so, yeah. pirate yeah pirate it worked game. it worked yeah yeah that's, that's that was we're, the we're planting main. the seed and yeah um yeah so other than that uh, there's also some new sound effects in the game for different uh, modes here selection modes for this these buttons some other ui places and changing recipes and so on uh, oh, and lastly, the the last like big change also is we we added a new language to the game. So now we have the uh, Latin American version of Spanish, also yep. fully supported. Um, yeah, I think that's it in terms of all the things that are worth mentioning. As Luke said, on Monday we will publish uh, a hefty change log with some developer notes, with some rationale behind some decisions. Uh, but also with every single small change, every single small bug uh, fix listed there, uh, all the things that are inspired by the community are will be specially uh, marked with a uh, thunder icon, so you will see w which things uh, ended up in the game which you might have uh, proposed. Um, and I think that's that's it. Yeah. yeah so let's move on to the. Q and A section. Yeah. yeah. Let's, um, let's do it. So um, in the background, you will be able to see the the trends, uh, ev events, and all the other features. And now we'll uh, go over the questions that we might have missed. We'll try to answer as many as possible. Um, okay, we answered those. Will there be more lore? I yeah, that we was covered yeah. that one. Um, yep. 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 Any chance destroying building uh, gives back the material that it was that was used for upgrades? Oh, for now, there are no plans for that. Uh, we wanted to keep that as as a as a additional investment, basically, to upgrading buildings as something that is not returned. Uh, all the other things are returned in the game. This one thing was intentionally left out for now. Um, but we'll see if if this is something uh, that is really really uh, important to you, and we'll also take a look at the balance a bit more in future updates. That might change, but for now uh, we think it's 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 fine the way it is. Uh, another question is about the starvation meta. Oh, um, being OP, what do how do you feel about it? Um, there was a lot of discussion about that on Discord, and we didn't really like talk about it there, but we read all of it. 
Um, I, I get that this is a tactic that might be uh, overly aggressive or used very often, and that might even uh, cause some people to like feel that the game has uh, is too easy or that this is some gimmicky tactic and so on. I'm not really sure if we want to do anything with that because the game is balanced around not using that tactic. Um, but I get that there maybe there is uh, a lot of ways. It's it's always the question of the generate tactic. I mean the generate in terms of the generating <laughs> game mechanics, not in terms of uh, describing players. Um, <laughs> where uh, where you know there's there's this fear of having this tactic in the game and that it might ruin the experience and ruin the balance of the game. I don't think we are at this point uh, with this with this tactic. Uh, I think it's more of a speed run tactic f for me personally. But to be completely honest with you, I would have to talk with Mihao about that a bit more, uh, and we would have to like look into it like more. Uh, took take some time basically to just think about that one thing uh, and try to decide what we want to do with that. For now, we don't have plans to change that. But I think we will take some time in the future and, and look at it a bit more closer. Um, I think a one, one mechanic that is more bothering to me is trading Amber for Amber, which is degenerating some orders and some mechanics with trade and influencing some perks. Uh, I would rather look at that first before looking at starvation. But that's something you know up in the air. We have to talk about it, think about it a bit more. And to be quite honest with you, we have to play the game more also uh, to understand how this tactic influences a lot of other things because um, this is some some yeah this is a big thing uh, a big big mechanic basically okay um, I know that some other questions um, can we get specializations on blueprint choice um, oh yeah this is this is a good type of feedback I, I think we'll eventually add that it's it's something that is very useful the uh, only issue here is that we have to like look at the tooltips and decide if where it fits in because you know there's a lot of information you want from the tooltip but all at the same time there is limited space different language versions also make this tooltip a lot bigger and we have we just have to come up with some like neat little layout for that but yeah that's that's a cool idea cool um what about uh, free half move when it's being constructed, like some other uh, buildings? I think this is a technical limitation, so probably. Oh yeah, half question for halves are, are yeah difficult. Um, it's more of a question for me how that's true. Also, like because of the range of halves, you might have noticed that we never really give you effects during gameplay that change the uh, the range of the half. We never really like. Do this, do this dynamically only before a game, for example, with the frost modifiers. Uh, that's because you know the range is limiting here, and movement of the half plus this range can cause some bugs. Basically, what if ranges overlap? We don't want that. What what if they like change and uh, overlap? Basically, so um, no plans for that right now. But uh, this is something that Miha would have to look at and tell me uh, exactly why technically that's uh, difficult. Okay, uh, will there be more uses for pigment? Um. Mm, not right now. Um, I know that this one resource is, is a bit weird, um, but at the same time, um, I would still wait with for the DLC because that is something that uh, might influence the balance of different resources, especially those more niche ones. Um, because you know, when we develop the, the DLC with the new species, um, it's not going to be in a vacuum. It's going to influence a lot of existing recipes or uh, resources in the game. Some of them might find new uses, some of them might be moved around. So I think at this point we're, when we are uh, talking a bit more about that, when you're sharing more information about that, then there might be something happening uh, with different like underutilized resources. But for now, in this patch and the next one probably, uh, this is gonna stay as it is, basically. Do we have any plans for more prestige uh, levels or harder challenges for people who already uh, completed Queen's Hand trial? Yeah, <laughs> I think that for the moment, no, th for there the are moment, no plans. I think no. for prestige, I 
um, I'm, I think we can more or less confirm that there are no plans, like no strict plan to add more prestige levels. This is it's 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 difficult because it's always you know there's always a race where we uh, where the best players have already beaten everything we've pr created, uh, and we're still developing some other stuff in the background. So this is a journey that will never end. Um, but uh, we'll we'll see about that. For now, there are no plans uh, for more prestige level levels. Uh, the Queen's Hand trial uh, is also like the the final challenge in the game, uh, which we might balance in the future to be a bit harder or maybe change things up a bit. But uh, other than that, that's not really uh, on the like backlog of things to do in the near future. Yeah, I mean we don't say n we never say never, but yeah, yeah. it's not on the uh, near future is like Aaron mentioned for now you're left with some self-imposed challenges <laughs> like uh, w w I've seen uh, someone beating Queen's Hand trial without purchasing any upgrades that was wild yeah um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or building a settlement without chopping any wood <laughs> that <laughs> yeah also that's also yeah, pretty uh, wild um, I'm, I'm personally more interested and in, you know that that's just my opinion it's not the that's not the opinion of the entire Aramite games team. I'm personally more interested in uh, some additional UX to the game and some content with with like some new species because that's always like the exciting stuff. Um, increased difficulty is is fun uh, uh, for for a lot of players, but uh, I think we released the Queen's Hand trial and now we're back to some like more content and maybe you know if stuff changes if if more players want difficult stuff then we'll revisit ideas about that um okay um what else sorry i've missed most of the stream are there any plans to vary or change the seal challenges um this is this is something we uh, want to take a look at but um i'm not sure how much we will be able to vary them um I have some ideas for changing some stuff around, but I don't think we will ever be at a point, or at least not in the nearest future, where this was gonna be completely RNG. Um, because those objectives are supposed to be like bigger objectives, uh, and when we are trying to design more of them, some of them will be very weak, they will be uh, very close to orders, but way harder orders um, so we are very like um, we, we don't want to to jump into this too too soon or too hastily or without a good plan I have some ideas uh, and we will talk about that more in the future but um, we had some some different uh, new seal objective ideas but you know it's always a question of uh, if it's gonna be as good as that what we have in the game, is it gonna be worse? It's gonna be just the same of different flavor, and we don't want that. We want to create something that is meaningful. Um, but this is something we're actively thinking about. Cool. There was also a question about uh, uh, this nice uh, gentleman here in the back, the Beaver Plush. Uh, are there going to be more uh, campaigns? Um, so for now, um, we don't have anything uh, in plans. I mean, um, I would also like to have more, but um, yeah, we'll see about that. Like, um, oh, um, destroy the carpet. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, would be cool, but we don't have any plans for now. Uh, we'll see about that. We also don't want to strain our wallets. Um, and that's yeah. That's always so that this is the the main reason why we're a little bit hesitant uh, whenever something costs money and we're asking you to pay we don't feel too comfortable with that <laughs> yeah um or well, at least we want to do something really really nice yeah um so uh question any plans to improve the ui for tree cutting such as grid mode with hiding trees and showing stamps only so we can easily mark trees um, also diagonal trees that are being ignored to get fixed um, so uh, this was uh, this topic was brought a lot of times on discord and I, I don't remember the uh, the w the exact response but for now it's 
uh, we're quite okay with how it is. Like, there are some issues with uh, tree selection and, exa for example, with tree mark colors with the cursor. I want to take a look at that and think about if we can improve that. Uh, with, the, the, with the diagonal trees, I think uh, Telhurin was uh, in this Discord discussion about that, and there were some technical things he was mentioning. I don't remember now, sorry about that. Um, but it's not really something that is uh, of the highest uh, importance right now. But the colors us. of highlighting... Um, oh yeah, the, they are very hard to spot on the marshlands. Um, we have that. I, I think we can say we have that yeah. in plans for one of the next updates. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this will th this is this is something we want to change as well because you're right it's hard uh, to spot sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think those are all the questions. If we missed anything, uh, please let us please come to Discord or Reddit or Steam. Uh, we, we try to be um, we try to be as responsive as possible. Uh, it's not always possible, especially recently we've had more uh, yeah. we've had more things on our heads uh, other than developing game uh, more things related to running a company uh, we are also going to uh, GDC game developer conference this year so we're putting some effort into making uh, a cool uh, design presentation about uh, against the storm so if you are attending GDC uh, Michal our lead designer and programmer will have a talk about it will be a aga an against the storm postmortem, um, in which he'll um, share our road to to 1.0. Basically, yeah. uh, I hope this will be super fun, and I hope that the video will be also available for everyone on YouTube. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, I think not all of the videos are uh, yeah, ending up on the on the YouTube channel, but if it is, we'll let you know because uh, hopefully this will be some uh, cool it will provide some cool insights into the history of Against the Storm um, what else um, yeah uh, we are also working we will start working very soon on the next update next free yeah. update yeah. 1.3 we don't have we haven't revealed anything for it yet we're still putting things uh, on our list we're looking closely at the at the feedback channels and at Upvoti. If you don't know Upvoti, this is our uh, feature request tool. So if you go to feedback.aromitegames.com, uh, you will be able to submit your ideas for new features um, and vote for other players' ideas. I recommend you do that. Um, this helps us prioritize and keep track of all the all the requests. So for example, the trends panel that you can see right now was the second highest. Yeah. Um, request i think the number one is not lakes uh it's <laughs> uh preserving the original road when yeah, you're putting yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, higher tier one we'll see about that we'll see about that um so vote uh, suggest your ideas and 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 we'll look at those carefully aaron was going through the for the yeah. through them um, for the past few days uh i think there are like four and a half thousand requests yeah, we, so we, obviously we <laughs> won't be able to deliver all of those but yeah. we're trying our best but we're going through them uh, periodically like with every update we at the end of like every sprint basically we we go through it we uh, add some stuff from this into our backlog we talk about most of the stuff if it's worth adding now if it's worth adding later so if something doesn't make it, if you like post some feedback in there uh, or some uh, proposition and it doesn't make it into the game right away, um, sorry, but <laughs> we are a small team. We have to prioritize, and sooner or later, a lot of the things end up in the game. So just uh, be patient. Uh, it's gonna. Uh, it's a fun journey, and we'll, uh, we're trying our best to make against the storm better uh, and implement as many cool ideas as we can. So yeah. yeah, so the update is going live on Monday, uh, March 4, at around 6 p.m. UTC. It might happen five minutes earlier, five minutes later, or half an hour or an hour. Um, Who knows? But we will we'll aim at 6 p.m. UTC. Um, unfortunately, it's not always possible to uh, do it simultaneously on all the platforms. Yeah. Um, Microsoft builds for PC Game Pass need to go through the certification process and some additional um checking so they might be released a couple 
minutes, hours later, and sometimes if any other platform has some hiccups, the uh, updates yeah, also yeah. go live a bit uh, later. But uh, expect them at around 6 p.m. UTC on Monday. And as we mentioned before, this update will have to mm, close your ongoing settlements. So if you're in the middle of a big thing, uh, doing some important deed or, or world event, please complete it before Monday, before the game updates. Um, you will be reimbursed with a citadel resources and a royal resupplies, but the city will be treated as non-existent. So there will be no new yeah. uh, settlement on the map. You won't get uh, the deeds that were in progress won't, won't be completed. Um, so be careful about that. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Please continue sharing your thoughts with us, especially uh, when it comes to the new features which will be introduced in update 1.2. Uh, we are super curious to, to hear your thoughts on the new trends window, on the uh, order through balance, um, and all the other things that were that are included in the update. And uh, yeah, come hang around on Discord, Reddit, Steam, wherever you yeah. you prefer. So thank you so much for joining us and tune in on Monday for the full update notes. Now we're gonna raid Ron Empire for some more Against the Storm yeah. content. If Ron is alive. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh no. Yep, he is. Cool. So thank you so much and have a fantastic day. Bye. Bye.